Guys, a bit of a different video today. <laughs> Might wanna check it out. Okay, my first question, actually this might be a, so most people, so South Africa now, know you as like the UFC champion from South Africa, like that's like the big thing now. What do you want to be known for? Oh, exactly that, I'd like to be known as the UFC champion from South Africa, that, that was the whole goal. The whole but, goal, okay, yeah, good, I'm very so happy with that. nailed it. <laughs> okay, and then passion, like, because it's not exactly, I don't know, like a gentle, you know chilled out kind of thing that you do like where does the passion come to like fuel it yeah i don't know for me like i'm not a uh, like, i'm not a very i don't have anger issues never have I'm not a not a very i'm not a violent person in in person right. i'm not a i don't get into fights all the time it's just when i saw it for the first time when i was a kid I just love the art form of it i love the discipline i loved how it was basically a, a chess match and I have ADHD, so I don't like chess. I like to play it myself. <laughs> so it was basically a chess match where you can punch each other in the face. At the end of the day, it's about, you know, a game plan much more than it is. And uh, the mental part of it much more important than the actual physical part. But the physical preparation is, without it, there is no win. There is no fight. Yeah. So for me, it was, it's the purest form of sports in the world. Purely, if you think about it, that was the first sport in actual fact that there's ever been because when the cave people were still here they were basically fighting each other for houses <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna stay in this cave boom <laughs> and people have been uh, drawn to it in terms of entertainment value yeah. everybody always looked at the guy that could beat the other guy and he's now the, the guy <laughs> yeah okay well this i suppose like one of my questions was you know what were you like as a kid because like if you were bullied ever I think those people might be regretting it somewhat now, but you say you're not a no, violent person, never, right? No, so. no, I've never, I, I, I was never bullied. I came in quite a few uh, fights in, in school, but nothing, just, you know, boys will be boys. I was in uh, a few fights in school, uh, primary school, even high school, but nothing, it was never like, Trickers was always in a fight. I was just in a few fights. Do you know those guys now? Have you ever seen them again? Yeah, a lot of them are friends now. Oh, Most of them, you know, <laughs> you know, like I said, boys will be boys. And, um, but I was never uh, over, like dramatic in terms of just getting so angry I couldn't help it. I've always felt the way that I fight, even when I got into a fight at school, it was always, I was always able to keep a cool mind about it. I was never so angry that I just had to punch someone. It would be more out of principle. Right. I'm going to punch you now because you did this. <laughs> and okay, cool. I mean, <laughs> nothing's changed. <laughs> and then, so this is again, I think, sort of stems to the whole idea about the fighting, right? Like. For me, who doesn't know much about it, you look at kids now who are really keen on it and like then the parents who are like, wow, okay, what do you say to the kids who are keen to get into it, but also to the parents to go like, it's not actually someone just getting into a ring and like blixing each other, like what is, yeah. you know, what do you say to those peeps? Yeah, and I mean, that's, that's uh, one thing that I'm most happy about, about this whole situation now. I feel like what I've been able to do in terms of becoming a world champion and being able to carry myself in such a manner where people look at this and don't go this is a barbaric sport mm. they go wow this guy is actually pretty well spoken he doesn't look like you know just this it used to be always be like bob wire tattoos blood yeah or that whole thing and that was the narrative that i would like to change i've always said when i started with the sport to say listen it's not just that it's and the sport has changed so much that it's not about the toughest or the most badass guy anymore. It's, yeah. it's about who's the smartest, who's the better prepared, who is the mentally strongest guy in there, right. and how good and how smart you prepare for that fight. That's how the game has changed, and that is the narrative that I was always looking for, forward to changing, especially in South Africa, because it wasn't a big sport or a mainstream sport in South Africa uh, up until very recently. So, you know, for parents and kids, uh, I own a gym in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. The memberships, in terms of the kids, just keeps rising and so many parents want their kids to do it. So, okay, so like, cause this, I think that's like a really cool sentiment because a lot of, like I say, a lot of people are very misinformed about the sport and, and yes. you have brought or shone a spotlight onto it. But another thing I think you might have is that sports people in South Africa, sort of sponsorship is quite tricky. Do you think, or like, what is your advice or like, what is your experience or whatever with sports people in this country? Like, can they make a living off of it? Yeah, it's, it's really hard if you are only fighting locally, uh, just in my sport uh, yeah. specifically. 
But now, once again, with me becoming world champion, it just puts so much more attention on the sport itself. It's not just about me, mm. it's about the sport and people getting enthusiastic about the sport. So I'm talking about, if you're looking at sponsorships, people are not just going and saying, I'm gonna sponsor this random sport. You are obviously gonna sponsor or get involved in a sport where you are, you know, you're also passionate about it. You also enjoy yeah. it. Otherwise, it, there's, you know, there's no point. It, there's no point. And right now, for the first time, a lot of people have been exposed to this sport. Like a lot of people say, you are the first fight I've ever watched. And I'm definitely not the last fight they've ever watched. So now there's a spotlight on it. It gives more up and coming guys the opportunity because in a small town, the one of the business owners might go and say, listen, I like the sport. We have this kid who's up and coming. Let's get behind him and help him maybe reach his goals. Yeah. So that's at the end of the day, it's about trying to get as much attention to it because obviously from a business point of view, it has to make sense too. Why are we sponsoring? Why are we? It's because of the um, the eyes on your brand to get yeah. that exposure. And uh, at the end of the day, it's so important for athletes to, to have that kind of backing. Yeah. And for companies to invest in the future of, of, of those athletes. I mean, one company, more specifically, Bankso. <laughs> they are one of your sponsors, right? 100%. And they're also uh, one of the big sponsors of, of, of Bafana Bafana. So with sports teams, with sports people like myself, you know, before making it to the ultimate stage, without this, there is no career. You know? yeah. And the one thing I always tell people is if you get a, a company who backs you like that, it doesn't, it's almost investing in the potential you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to realize for, for as a local, uh, for the sport that I do, if you don't have that, you need a day job. And if you have a day job, you are definitely not in a position where you're ever going to become a world champion. You now people like, like Banks are making it possible for athletes to, to reach that goal. And now your go-to song to sing when you're in a car. What is oh, that? that is a very interesting question. <laughs> I'm imagining it's not the same one you play before you're about to go out. To no, no, I never listened to that song actually. I only listen to it when I fight. I don't listen to it any other time. Well, because Wayne told me that it might, you know, you might just trigger. Maybe, may <laughs> you know, that. And also, it might lose its punch. You know, oh, that, yeah, that song. yeah. I've been walking out with that song for 10 years. So. Okay, so that's. Uh, it's, it's, it's also, it's, the way I see it is when that song plays, I know it's go time and it, it, it always keeps the punch that it, it had in the beginning because. Otherwise, you're just going to get used to it. Yeah. Okay, so, so then you have to have another it's one. Not that, like I, something like Kelly Clarkson or something. No, nah, <laughs> probably Afrikaans song, I have to say. I think it's, oh, nice. it's going to be Afrikaans song. Okay. Yeah, when I'm singing along. Buddha Pompey. Yeah, maybe. Yeah? Definitely. <laughs> it will definitely be on the playlist. Okay. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and then what about a pet peeve? Like, what is one thing that bugs the hell out of you? Me? Yeah. Jeez, I think there's quite a few things that bugs me. Um, oh, that's got to be. Oh, like cold water splashing on me. It's like an instant, <laughs> I will kill you for it. That's so <laughs> like, random. I know it's very random, Do but since I was a kid, like it would just happen. I mean, if somebody would <laughs> splash you with water, it's, I mean, just for the joke, I'd never take it as a joke. It's, okay. But everybody who knows me, like is my brother, everybody says, do not do that. Cause I tell them it's really not a joke. It really pisses me off. That's like so I get instantly <laughs> angry. It's a very random thing and I don't, I'm not proud of it. But it's oh, fine. It's, it is what it is. Okay, then what is like your biggest fear that that like people might not like mine's ice cream sticks. So it's like so random. Ice cream what is sticks. It? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not scared of ice cream sticks. Cream. I'm scared of the dark. I am. Um, oh. Always have been. I don't know why, but I, I don't like the dark at all. And my biggest fear on earth is probably sharks. Yes. Uh, I don't go in the ocean. Ever? No. I have nothing to do. Like uh, no, no need to do, do that. Love fishing. Go fish a lot. Love it. Okay. But uh-uh. Not sure. I'm a land animal, it's fine. <laughs> okay, and then like where to from here? Like you've kind of like that goal has been reached. Like what do you do when you've reached your goal? Now what? Yeah, well, uh, a goal has been reached. That's not my goal. Okay. It's uh, a goal and it's a step in the right direction. Now there's a lot of things to do. I mean, firstly, becoming champion is one thing, but defending and retaining your title, that's the yeah. next thing. And then of course, you know, I don't want to be just a champion in one division. I want to go up in, in weight and uh, eventually challenge the champion above me to weight higher than me for, for, uh, for another belt. Are you into those sorts of cars, like the brand new super sports cars, or are you a classic? No. Well, I just like power and a lot of it. Yeah, so. You know, I drive a Mustang myself and, and of course I have a, 
the the GL, uh, GLA the Mercedes GLE the AMG S it's a special special car. If you could have, would you have considered being a racing driver? I would have loved that. That's the it was. If I was going to be something else and just choose, I would choose what I'm doing right now. I love it more yeah. than anything. But close second would probably be a, wanting to be a rock star or a race car driver. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's one of the most <laughs> badass things in the world to do. I think I love, uh, that's what I would want to be. If you want to stand a chance to win this amazing Mercedes-Benz SL190, go to the Bankster.com website and click on the Tour the Bankster link and follow all the instructions to enter to win this amazing car and many, many more prizes.